So today I've got a really interesting um, person to chat to. We've got Russell Smith on. Russell has been in the industry for quite a while. He's a photographer that I've known also from many years back and is doing some really interesting stuff. So I really wanted to get to ask him what he's doing and how he's dealing um, with the current situation, find out about his new work and maybe showing us some of it. And yeah, also how he got into the industry and, and ask him where he thinks the industry is going and if he's got any other ideas or bits of advice that he could pass on. So Russell, yeah, thanks so much for coming on and, and joining us here and having a chat to us and telling fellow collaborators about what we, we were wanting to learn from you and do. So how did you get started in photography? Just to give us a bit of background about yourself before we get going. First of all, Malcolm, thank you for having me on, on, on this forum. Um, I think it's a great initiative. Um, yeah, so uh, I was one of the first graduates of Red and Yellow back in the day. Um, and that kind of opened my eyes to the creative world and being able to um, do what I loved and also maybe making a living out of it. Um, and then from there, became an art director, worked at... Um, DDB White House back in the day on, on the Woolworths account and um, went on to Ogilvy in Cape Town and worked with some amazing people, uh, including photographers and um, built relationships. I then went off um, and lived in Paris for three years from 99 to 2002, where I art directed um, in uh, Lolintas and also at Ogilvy in Paris which was an amazing experience. And there too, I worked with some incredible photographers, uh, international photographers. We, were, we had great budgets back then, flying around the world, flew to New York, came back to Cape Town to shoot a commercial, ironically. And um, it opened my eyes to, I also, I also think that working in only big agencies and not in the small sort of hot, sh hot shops uh, at the time, um, on one hand, it had big budgets, but it was very, very safe. It was like we had to always check and double check and triple check our work creatively against uh, a load of people. And, you know, they say a committee is um, the death of creativity. Well, I felt that whenever we came up, myself and my copywriter came up with an idea, it would be changed so many times uh, until it got back to us that it almost didn't feel like our idea anymore. And I lost um, a lot of uh, sense of my passion. Because when you're young, you have a lot of passion. You want to change the world with your ideas. And I felt that a lot of that was taken away, both in South Africa and in France. I realized that working with photographers, I actually enjoyed what they were doing more. They were creating something. And even if there was a brief, even if there was a discipline, there was a level of creativity they had behind the lens that couldn't be taken away by anybody. They interpreted it their way and their light through, you know, from the brief they were given. And I really enjoyed that. I got to art direct cars, uh, portraiture, still life, um, working with some of the top chocolate photographers and car photographers in the world, literally in the world. And I was inspired and I came back to South Africa and didn't want to co continue my career in advertising. Um, I didn't really believe that's where I wanted to be anymore. And I spent some time thinking about it and I connected with two photographers that I'd worked with. One taught me daylight, one taught me flash. In those days it was film. So there was quite an outlaying barrier to entry. So you had to buy film, you had to buy cameras, you had to buy like you know, your, your medium format mirrors, you had to buy your light meters and your tripods and you had to buy, get some kind of lighting and um, you know, testing and then waiting for your, your film to come back from the lab and making all these mistakes. And it really was a, a labor of love. And I, um, I thoroughly enjoyed getting immersed in that and being also in the dark room. Uh, and then, yeah, just getting it technically and creatively right and working hard until I felt like I could go to the market. A lot of the guys today pick up a camera and they think they're photographers, where in those days, we were like, we got to add something to the industry that's important and will, will be different enough to make a client pay money for it before we go and sell our wares. 
So yeah, it's a bit of old school, maybe thinking, but I, I still believe those were good days because we learned um, technical and we learned how to, how to read light. And it was, it was an important time. Uh, absolutely. And if, if I think, I mean, I, <clears throat> I did four year apprenticeship before I even considered thinking about going out and promoting myself as a photographer or even calling myself a photographer and, and, and that. And I think it was, yeah, it was in those days and I think it's important and I'd like to see more of that now. Um, but just to, having that worked with um, advertising and now being a photographer, also in advertising, that must be a huge benefit to you, understanding both sides of the, you know, your, your, your agency side and your side. Um, when you're well, absolutely. A, a lot of the advantage, I think, not even conceptually, is to is to sympathize and understand the role of your client and put yourself into their shoes because uh, you, you understand that they have somebody also maybe a creative director or a, or a boss somewhere or a client that they need to answer to, that they, that, that they have certain needs. And to be commercially viable as a photographer, you can't, we, we're not artists working on this sort of street as, you know, as one says, we need to think about how to solve a business problem and how to creep into the head of a client or creative director or whatever and solve the problem for them. And then you get a win-win because you immediately realize that when you're shooting something that you can actually use, that, that is commercially viable, and then the client actually is happy with, or the agency is happy to show their client, then you're, you're, you're on a good wicket. So um, for me, a lot of the time I'll, 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 tell, I'll tell my clients that I've never worked with before, like I, I was a client, I was an art director. So I, I get where you're coming from. I'm, I, I'm also very inclusive when I work. So I want people to see on the screen while I'm shooting, what I'm doing, add their input uh, when, it's, when, it, when, you know, when it's time. Um, rather than being the sort of like working in a sort of silo and saying, well, I'll show you what I'm doing when I'm done. And then like getting this hor horrible sort of uh, shock or surprise, and not leaving it to that, but rather including, include, be inclusive and actually running a shoot where everybody on the day is contributing, whether the stylist, stylist gives you an idea about light or you give the stylist an idea about uh, styling, then everybody's contributing. And, and I think that makes for a very positive uh, experience. And um, one more thing, also talking about experience, I've realized that a lot of photography is experiential. You know, people want to come away from their office and enjoy a studio where, you know, they get the right kind of coffee they like, they get the music they want to listen to. And they felt like they listened to and heard. And I think uh, photographers who go into the industry and want to make a business out of it and be commercially viable need to be people who understand a lot of these subconscious things that happen on a shoot that um, we are gone past the days where you can scream and shout and kick, kick your, 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 you know, your, 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 your bag because you're not happy with what's happening because you're the sort of photographer artist. We've gone to those days. We need to be now more inclusive and obviously within reason and keeping your creative integrity because if you're a pushover, they'll move on as well. So you need to still keep that integrity, but know when to push and when to, and when to let go, you know. Pick your battles. And um, I, I've just, I've, we've been chatting before we came on here and we've been chatting about a number of different things. And um, it's been quite interesting that we've, we've reached this period now of, of COVID-19. We've gone sort of not able to work and stuff. And you've been doing some really interesting things. And I, yeah, can you just tell us a little bit about these great portraits that you've been doing and how you got into that and you told me about you were learning stuff about them from somebody else and, and, and how you've really got into it. And, that, and I think they're absolutely beautiful. And I'd like you just to tell me a little bit about them. Yeah, thanks, Mark. I've always liked to use the time when I've had uh, free and not chasing my own tail with work and post-production and invoicing or quoting to, to upskill and learn from other photographers or other people. And it gets to a point, I suppose, where we, we can't as photographers always go to other photographers and ask them what they're doing. So um, whether it's December time when things quieten down with work wise, or whether it's time like COVID when work quietens uh, down a lot, um, I like to sort of go out there and see what's happening and uh, trawl the sort of, um, internet space and see 
uh, if there's anything that's inspiring that I can learn from or anything that I'd like to learn that I don't know how to do from a lighting or post-production point of view or for a, from any, any kind of um, angle in photography. And this time around in COVID, I was searching uh, a site and I came across um, a style of photography and post-production that was quite painterly in its, in its style. And I really liked it. And I really thought, wow, that's something that I really would like to learn how to do. And I have, I have some idea, but not, a, not, a, not an understanding completely of what that entails and the process that, in, that, it, that you one needs to do to get that. So um, I went to this particular photographer who's a Ukrainian photographer and I went onto his site and I saw that he was offering a masterclass one-on-ones. Um, it wasn't for free, so I had to uh, pay for it, but that's, you know, I believe is important as well. There has to be an exchange. He's spent time and he's learned how to do that through his own experience. I think it's important for that exchange to happen. And, um, and I approached him and we set up a, a Skype um, one-on-one and we spent about two hours going through his lighting and his post-production technique. Um, and he videoed the whole thing. So basically I could go back. I didn't have to write notes because I could talk to him and understand what he was doing, his process. And then I could just, he would send me the videos afterwards and I would just follow them after that when I was practicing on my own. But essentially it was a way of integrating subjects into backgrounds, um, making the images feel almost timeless in an oil painting kind of, kind of way, very much in the style of the old masters of, of, the, of the Renaissance day, the paintings, the, the, sort of the paintings of Vermeer and Rembrandt. Um, and I, I just love that. My, for me, nostalgia is one of my keys heels. I, I get very taken up by nostalgia and, and, um, and, and I thought, wow, this is, this is something really amazing because I can see it's a photograph, but I can see it's been painted. It's, there's been a painterly thing happening texturally as well. So we went through this and then we spent about a week on his raw images and some of my old images met up again chatted again, went through some of the things that I'd stumbled uh, across and he was helping me with that. And, uh, and then basically um, sent him a few more images. And then um, I started, uh, you know, uh, like just working on it on my own. And for me, I think it's also important to say that, you know, you learn things from other photographers, but we not necessarily, we, that isn't initially how we would see it. It's maybe a technique, a lighting idea that we get. But for me, it's about integrating it into our own personalities and our own styles and our own way of shooting. So for me, I didn't want to copy what he was doing straight off. So yeah, it was, it was integrating backgrounds and people, but I didn't want to necessarily make my images look like they were his images or from the same centuries or time period necessarily. So um, the other thing that I had a problem with was that Part of his technique is to keep everything quite soft. So your apertures are very wide um, and the edges are quite soft and the skin, the skin detail is quite, quite sort of soft. There's, there's just sharpness on the eyes. And I, all my images that I had in my um, archives, the pores were too sharp because uh, I was shooting everything at maybe F8 or 5.6 or whatever. And it was tripping me up. I, I couldn't get the same feel as his his photography because his paintings, because the, everything was too sharp and the painters wouldn't, would, 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 would use obviously uh, strokes. They wouldn't be getting pause to the minutia, to the minutia that, that he had, that, that I had on my photographs. And so I decided, well, I've got a camera at home. I've got two willing or unwilling children at home. <laughs> no, 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 um, no you access to models. Or, okay. <laughs> Sorry using your children are you <laughs> yes oh, wow. uh, i won't admit that if anybody comes to knock knocking on my front door but <laughs> um but I, I had a few dress ups in in the house and i thought let's try and 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 at first it was like i want to just do a few shots see if i can simulate something in the same kind of uh, uh aperture ranges and lighting as um, as what I've been, been learning about. And let me see if I can start creating some more imagery, uh, which is a little bit more in the style that I want to try and get it into. Um, considering that I'd learned that, that done this tutorial during COVID and I had nothing shot in, in the COVID time that was actually right. So I got dressed up the boys or they've got dressed up and they are shot in my garage um, with a very normal gray background wall. 
And I've kind of been learning how to cut them out and put them into an image which um, will tell the story of what they're wearing or that will kind of enhance that, that story or idea and then match the lighting and textures to make it live together. Um, so this is Leo, my younger son, and he um, often needs a few sweets or some television bribing to get him to <laughs> to I'm be in front of the camera. He's dressing up and having it. This must be a lot of fun. And what a great way to to bond with your kids as well. It's absolutely wonderful. Exactly. Exactly. It's it, it's great for them to see what I do too, because I go to work every day, and you know I don't think they really understand it. I think they started getting a bit of an idea of of what it's like. And what's what, what's wonderful? I've just used natural light. I have used the open garage door. I've got no lights with me. Um, I think I think the original photographer used the beauty dish, and I haven't been able to even get my beauty dish. And this is all um, just uh, daylight, um, no flash, uh, but directional as I like to shoot, and also kind of slightly Vermeer um, lighting. There you can see it's rudimentary. I've even got the back of an old photograph to to bounce and reflect light in on the shadow side, and you can see the bicycle in the garage there, and it's like a grimy wall background. It's nothing. There's nothing to. Um, there's no. There's no studio manager in this in this uh, particular space, and um, you don't get coffee in a, you know, in a rask. But um, but but, it's a very short process because you've got kids. They they get a bit tired, and uh, this is a, this is a friend's uh, daughter who who came by a few days ago, and I um, haven't got a lot of time with them, so. I think I kind of know I want to get sort of waist up. I want to get an expression that's not always smiley. This was a behind the scenes, but usually the images are quite sort of pensive. Uh, they're always portraits. So it's not an action shot, so to speak. It's more about looking at the camera or not, but it's about a, a moment in time and capturing something to immortalize this, this, uh, this particular time of, 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 of uh, whether it's a pirate or a chef you know, in in those days when they used to have very sort of, I used to, I also got go quite low and shoot up to make it quite heroic, um, and then make sure the light kind of also goes over to the other side. So his left eye, underneath his left eye, there's a little bit of that light coming over. So it's not just lit on the one or one side. So um, interestingly enough, like for example, if you look at this image, that beret I think was brown or a different color. Uh, and also with liquefier, I can make it maybe slightly more, um, give it more body. So I can do quite a lot uh, with Photoshop. Uh, I can also, if the clothing is made for an adult, I can bring it in a little bit to make it look more like it's, was, it was made for them. Um, yeah, then finding the backgrounds, which, which help complement the story. And, and, and a lot of it is just taking out the detail, smoothing the image down to more painterly feel, taking the blacks to make them more milky. Um, and then, yeah, and then, and then encapsulating some kind of look from the, from them it, that, that, that works and, and connects that I connect with and that the person that's looking at the image will connect with. So it's been a hell of a lot of fun. Um, for me on a more personal level, it's been a, a lifeline to my photography during this period when we can't go out and shoot. Um, when there no, there's nothing really happening. Um, it keeps me kind of sane. Um, I've, got a, a, I've got a mission when I wake up in the day to either get a shot done and get it uh, um, post-produced and then maybe put it on Instagram the next morning. Um, or either I have an image from the day before, I've shot two and I've got another one extra and I can start on that. And then in between homeschooling and whatever, get a bit of time on there and then the evening finishing it off and then it gives me a kind of a start and an end and a, and a, and a, and a task to do for the day. Uh, so, so it gives me a bit of structure when otherwise I would maybe have be reading or whatever it is, but, but it gives me something to do. And it also enables me to carry on shooting and thinking about my photography, how to improve, how to style better, how to get the kids doing something a little bit better. And also, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt to, uh, be putting it on the social social media and showing people you're still there and saying hi and in a very innocuous way, you know, um, even if it's not commercially. And and that's kind of where it's come from. Um, just yeah, you know, just keeping keeping the camera going, um, being positive, uh, creating 
we creators and it's good to create when in a time when there's a lot of negative around and a lot of potential stuff that could be bringing us down. So, so that is kind of where it came from. And then obviously, like you say, amazing time spent with children and my kids and uh, dressing them up and the fun that all goes into that part of things. And then just, just finishing off on these ones here, you know, you often get this, this thing and I, I've never understood it. And it's something that I, um, what was done always in photography and people don't seem to understand that is that we're using the computer as a darkroom effectively and we manipulate images and then you, you get this thing like, oh, you know, it's been comped or it's been this or it's been, you know, digitally manipulated. You know, how do you get around that when people say that? And, you know, I don't see anything wrong with it. It's, you know, a painter will paint a weird straight thing, painting and do strange things and they say, oh, it's modern art. You know, we're using the tools we have. Do you get much of that or do you, you know, do you subscribe? You know, what do you say to people when they say that? So I was one of the guys who was a purist and I, I think I fought tooth and nail to hold on to film. I actually didn't want to go digital and I would try and get the job in, into film. I know you were an early, Malcolm, you were an early, early digital adopter. I was probably the last. Yeah. Yeah, I, was very, I was very early. Uh, there was one thing I got right. I saw that change coming and <laughs> maybe yeah, not much yeah, else, but I got yeah. that right. Yeah. So, so I, I think in those days, in my defense, was con concerned about the, this is by the side, that, that the whites were not, there was no depth in the whites in the digital that there is now. And there was like that, there wasn't the volume that we get now, like there was in film. And when I just saw my film images, I just felt like there was so much amazing information in there and a, a quality in the chemicals that wasn't in the zeros and ones. But that's long past. So I was a purist and um, I wanted everything in camera. And actually, I still do. I still am one of those guys that believe 90% in camera, 10% in post, because there's no way you're going to light something well in Photoshop. But if you've got a great image that's lit nicely to begin with, you can enhance it in, in post. So I definitely subscribe to that. 100%. Um, but I also know the reality of, just like we all went digital, um, we have to use the tools that are we have available. And I totally um, respect those guys that are doing everything in film and how they do that. Uh, and I think maybe there's a realism to that which you don't get in post. but you know, there's a photographer that I follow, Eric Almas, who says, I don't take photos, I make photos. So he has turned his whole industry into something where he composites, he'll shoot elements, even people in a studio, they'll match the light. But there's an art to that, and, and not everybody can do that well. And he creatively puts it together. So the ultimate end goal is something of great beauty. And for me, I think if he, if he didn't do that well, it would be a problem. Um, but ultimately, because I love images and I love to see light used well. Um, but having said that, I still believe, you know, I get, I, I still get quite cross when I see people lighting badly and then they're trying to fix everything in, in, in post and they're like, it's like, no, not the right way around. I think that's why I go back to the idea that people need to really, photographers need to spend more time understanding their craft and learning how to use light. Because that's not something that that's going to set people apart from other people who can use all the software in the world. Um, if you can light beautifully and and then just the last bit of makeup is on on post production, I think you're going to get a better result. It's like advertising coming up with an idea. The idea has to be strong, and the execution has to just enable that that idea to come out. It was similarly with photography. If you've taken a badly a badly taken photograph, you can use a Hasselblad and you know whatever it is. Um, and the, the, the latest software, it's not going to necessarily, it may, it may take a lot extra long time and there's a lot of retouches out there, but I do feel that um, I want to, as a photographer for my own, for my own sanity, for what I, why I got into this and for what I love it for is, is to make sure that the light is good to begin with. Yeah, I think, I think it's absolutely crucial. And, and, you know, I've, I've always believed that, you know, I also come from the film days and used to shoot eight by 10 and, all, all that stuff and you know that, that that's my training and my background and um, then moved when I saw things were training and wanted to get in ahead of uh, you know ahead of the way you know of the times <clears throat> and I'm, I still to this day believe that you you light it right up front and I still have this belief that 
if the picture is not a great picture without going before it goes into post or it's not even a great but a, a good picture and yeah. thing then you've got to start again until it becomes a good picture and then you enhance it you could do a hell of a lot of work in post it doesn't matter but it should still be a great picture up front um before so yeah i absolutely couldn't couldn't agree with you more on that one and it's something that i that is very very um important in my work as well and i think most of us from from the older days who shot film understand that and, and do it but I, I do think there is a place for manipulation of images i think you know much as any other art form manipulates whatever they do you know you don't always have to draw paint a person in absolute likeness of them i mean picasso never did and you know yeah. hopefully nobody looked like some of his pictures but with the portraits and there is that it's a crafted it's taken time it's it's using the, the information you got and creating something really beautiful and something that that 50 years down the line or 100 years down the line, people will still come back and look to because it's beautifully crafted. But I think something that's just snapped, nobody's going to come back and look at it, yeah. personally. Yeah. I think also special, it'll have special meaning in this time of COVID that I'll remember this, you know, because... Usually I'd be in an office. I wouldn't be working from home. I wouldn't have access to the kids like I would because they'd be at school. Um, you know, we've got the time now and I've got the time to work on these in, in an unfettered sort of way where I'm not worrying about the other work that I ha have going on. And so I think I'm going to look back at this with fond memory at, at a time that I had this, you know, um, space to, to shoot this uh, body of work. Um, which I don't know where it'll go to or what I'll do with it or if I need to do anything with it at all. It can be just a, a th therapy for me at, at this time or become something more commercially. But um, it has been, it has been a, a, a really good thing for, for me in, in, in this lockdown to have this, this time to shoot them and to work on the images. I think it's yeah. when you reach a time like COVID and where we are in a, a difficult time is, is to use that opportunity to do something. And I think, yes, it's a bad time, but I think we will look back at this in a few years time and say, well, actually, there were a lot of positives. And we've, as individuals and the general community and the world as a whole, I think is going to learn something from this because there's going to be huge changes. And I think they learned something from previous historical events. And I think this will be the same. And I think, Russell, you know, you're going to go forward and look and say, you know, I learned a new technique. I learned something new. I learned to appreciate what I was doing more. I learned to appreciate my family and, you know, how we were going to do things. So I think there's a lot of positives that we can draw from this time. And we've, you know, and whether it's the failure or the positiveness of this is whether we can actually draw from this and actually make it, make the necessary changes going forward to, to, to make things better for ourselves. So, yeah, thank you so much. And I and really appreciate it. What's best to add? To add pleasure, to add to that, I'll just say to photographers or guys out there in the, in the creative world, like this is a good time to to up your skill and learn and to go and glean. Like we've got we've got unbelievable access on the internet now to, for the first time, photographers around the world who are prepared to give up one-on-one -on -one time. Yes, it probably will cost, but that's fine. Um, to speak to you and to help you with your portfolio or to find your voice or to just give you some lighting techniques and tricks and ideas. This is a great opportunity to, to turn this into a positive. And when you go out there, know something that you didn't know before and be a bit different, a different photographer. Uh, and that's my kind of my, my message. It's like grow and learn and be hungry and turn this into an amazing opportunity that you may never get again to, to learn and to grow. And um, besides what you're going to learn as a photographer, mentally, it's an amazing thing to do. So exercise your brain and do what you love doing.